Okay, we want to take a look at how to analyze the data, and a couple of things I've noted uh, picking up this data. It's difficult to load a CSV file into the program, so make sure you save everything as a data file. Let me just show that to you again under File, Data, and you go to Save. Keep it in the binary format, and then when you're done collecting all your data, and you've analyzed all your data, then save it as a CSV file so that you can send that information to me in the Excel file that I've loaded onto the Files menu. What we want to do at this point is analyze the data. So I go to File, Data, and Analyze. So I've already loaded some data, but let me just show you how I did that. So I got Data, Select Moon, and I clicked on IO. And here's the data that I collected. And this data is pretty much false. I just put in numbers. Uh, that were somewhat related to the actual readings, but not exact. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set my initial parameters. And what that means is I want to give this system something to start with. So I go to Data, Plot, and I'm going to fit a sine curve, and then set my initial parameters. And they'll start with T0, that's basically where it starts. And you can see this starts at 636. The period is from one time to when it repeats. And I'm going to look at these peaks down here at the bottom. And here's one, and here's another. Now this is one day, so they seem to be taking about a half a day to get across. So I'll put 0 0.5 in there. And then the amplitude is the total distance from top to bottom, divided by 2, or the distance from the center to the top. And that's at about 2. So here's 1.5, and here's 3, and this is a little bit above 1.5. So let me just put in 2. And then I'll press OK. And you can see this data is not very well set, and that's OK. OK, so what I want to do is I want to get these dots on the curve as much as I can. So I can see this bottom, I want to be pretty close to that dot there. And what I'm going to start by doing is moving things over to the right. And I do that by moving this. And you'll see this number over here, the RMS residual, is turned red. And what that means is it's not very good. You want it to be green, but I'm going to move stuff over anyway. And then when I've gotten to the far side, I hit the center button, or the reset button. And I kind of like the way those are lining up. Those look pretty good to me. So I'll reset that zero again. And I want this residual to be under 1. Right now it's 1.076. E.00. I want it to be definitely less than 1. So this E, which is the power of 10, this is a scientific notation, should be around negative 1. And the smaller I can get it, the better. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the period here in days. Let's see if I can get any better. And here I'm down to E negative 0 0.01, so this is 0 0.79 here really. So I'm getting pretty good there. And I can alter my amplitude here a little bit. And that doesn't seem to be getting a whole lot better. So what you can do to make this work is you can click instead of pushing the slider. I can click one way or the other. And I'm going to watch this RMS residual. And I'm going to see if it turns red. So you can see it's getting smaller as I click the left button on amplitude. And as soon as it turns red, I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the period. I really don't like the looks of that. I'm going to extend the amplitude. I want to touch those three dots. I know it went red, but I just need that to add, go to those better. And then I move that curve over a little bit. I, what I did is I changed the period. And I'm just adjusting that until this is pretty low. And then I'll even adjust the T0 a little bit. And you may have noticed when I went left, it turned red immediately, and that's why I'm moving it to the right. Uh, 
All right, and then I kind of repeat that process. I keep doing that a little bit at a time. And this dot, a little bit to the left of the curve, so I'm going to tighten up the period. I'm going to squeeze the accordion a little bit tighter, if you will. And I'm just going to leave it at that for now. I can get better than this, I think, but my data isn't real, so that's why it's not matching up very well. You should be able to get an RMS residual of under 0.5 and probably even under 0.2. The information that's important here is the period. According to this analysis, the period is about 0.51 days, and I'm going to put that piece of information into the spreadsheet you were provided. The amplitude is 2.062. I'm going to put that information into the spreadsheet you're provided. So here's the spreadsheet that you've been given. And if I go back to the CLIA, I can see again the period is 0.51. So I go to the spreadsheet, and here in the period for IO, I would put 0 0.51. And you can see it converts it automatically into years. And then I want the semi-major axis. That's the same as the amplitude. And so the amplitude is 2.062. I'm going to put in 2.062. And you can see it converts that into astronomical units automatically, and then it even computes the mass of Jupiter. And again, these numbers are not correct, and so this mass is not correct. But you can see that mass is much less than 1, and that makes sense because the mass of Jupiter should be less than the mass of the Sun. And solar masses measure the mass of the Sun. You'll repeat this process with real data for all four moons, putting in the period here in the semi-major axis which again is the same as the amplitude in here.